Uh, my next guest, Dr. John Lott, he's president of the US Crime Prevention Center. Um, welcome to the Freeman Report, John. Well, thank you for having me on. I appreciate it. Yeah, thanks for joining me. Um, John, before we get talking about the news in um, the US, and there is a story that I want to talk about in the New York Post regarding the Democrats saying that crime has been reduced in their their term. Before we do that, though, I'm sure you've heard about all of this trouble that we've had in the UK and the sentences, really harsh sentences being um, dished out right. for people who've said stupid things online. Can I just get your view uh, or your summary of what happens in the US? Do people get um, charged over there by the police for inciting um, violence or for stirring up racial hatred there? Well, I mean, if you go and tell somebody to go and engage in violence, and they do, uh, but that's not what people are getting in trouble with in the UK. I mean, you have a video of uh, people beating up somebody else and you repost that, you can get in trouble, depending on who's doing the violence that's there. You're not advocating or whatever, you're just acting as somebody who's showing and reporting what uh, others are doing. Um, that's not advocating violence, it's just simply reporting it. I mean, does that mean uh, news reporters can't go and talk about there being a riot going on someplace? So. Uh, you know, it's it's one thing for you to actually go and uh, and kind of, you know, tell people to go and engage in violence. It's another thing for you to, to comment on it or to just report that it's occurring. And what about in the U.S.? Because I'll give you one example. So there was a 51, and obviously we know this with hindsight now, but this lady, she was 51. She's a grandmother. She's a carer, full-time carer for her husband. She heard about the murder of these three young girls and um, obviously she had probably seen the post which said that it was a Muslim incorrectly. Um, and she basically posted bomb the mosques with all of the adults inside. What would happen in the US with, with something like that if there were actual riots going on? Would that be something that the police were interested in? No, I don't think so. I mean... You know, somebody can make a mistake about identifying uh, the people that committed the crime, uh, but that doesn't mean that you're saying that they should be attacked. Um, you know, those are two different things. And, you know, it's, it's going to chill discussions about things. People need to be able to have the ability to, to go and say that they think uh, you know, a particular type of person or group of people are committing crimes at, at higher rates than others. Now, you can go and say they're wrong. You can go and explain that they are mistaken on it and provide the evidence, uh, as you're saying, that exists in this case. And that's how people learn about things. Um, but to go and say that uh, you're going to be the one in charge of determining what's true or not and whether or not they're going to be able to go and say it, but because what seems to be happening in the UK is that uh, if particular people uh, say that violence is occurring, uh, they get in trouble. But if others say it, uh, it's OK. It depends upon uh, kind of which side of the political stream you're on in the UK. Uh, they care yeah, about very, violence very much. against certain people, but not violence against others. Yeah, very, very, very much two-tier policing is as it's been referred to in the UK. Were there have there been similar discussions in the US recently? Because of course, um we've saw we've seen quite a lot of trouble in the US with BLM um and other um sort of protest movements and we've seen riots. Um have would you say because I, I, I do seem to remember calls that actually that those rioters were let off quite um leniently by the police. Is that really true? What happened over there? Do people go to jail? Well, again, a lot of it seems to depend on what side you're on. I mean, say if you compare like the January 6th uh, riot at the Capitol versus, let's say, the Lafayette Square riot uh, at the White House uh, about six months earlier. Uh, at the Lafayette Square riot, there were 120 police officers who were uh, injured. 
Uh, you had people try to scale the White House fence. Um, uh, you had uh, a church burned down there. Uh, and nobody was arrested. Nobody was convicted. Uh, for the January 6th, you had people who were simply in the area, uh, people who there's no evidence that they engaged in any violence at all, uh, uh, who were arrested and been put in jail and held in jail for long periods of time. Uh, you, know, you had in January uh, 2017, uh, on January 20th, 2017, you had the riots for Donald Trump's inauguration. Uh, you had something like 54 Trump supporters uh, were hospitalized as a result of that. Many others, scores of others, were injured. Um, you know, nobody was arrested for that. Uh, property was destroyed. Uh, you had police hurt in the, that situation. So, you know, the Lafayette Square and the 2017 inauguration riots uh, were basically by Democrats engaging in the violence. Uh, the January 6th arrests and, and problems were uh, involving Republicans. So, it, you know, it seems to depend a lot, yes, about two-tier policing or two-tier prosecutions. It, it's There's been a lot of asymmetry uh, with regard to them. People have have discussed that, but at least people in the United States haven't yet been arrested for talking about those things. Yeah, yeah. Um, on on the charges and prosecutions, it sounds actually, although the context is slightly different, it sounds actually like the US is very similar to the UK and, and politics has seeped its way into um, policing because it does seem that it also goes on in the US. Um, now, John, um, let's talk about this New York Post um, story, um, because they're saying that the Democrats are hiding the rise in violent crime under the Biden administration. So what's the truth on this? Because obviously they're talking about it in comparison with Trump's term. I, I would say, I mean, there, there are two sets of crime data, main sets of crime data that we have from the Department of Justice. One is from the FBI, which counts the number of crimes reported to police. And then there's something from the Bureau of Justice Statistics called the National Crime Victimization Survey, uh, which tries to get a measure of both reported and unreported crime. They survey 240,000 people each year, and they've been doing that for 50 years. And uh, normally in the past, those two sets of numbers, the reported crimes and the total crimes, uh, have, kind of, have gone together. Uh, that is up until 2020, when each year since 2020, they've gone in opposite directions. In 2022, for example, while the FBI showed a 2% drop in reported crimes, the national crime victimization data showed a 42% increase in total violent crimes. Uh, and you know, so if you look at um, if you look at the uh, national crime victimization data, it was falling during by 17 percent during the Trump administration, and it's gone up by 43 percent under Biden. And so the first question you have is why why are those two why is reported crimes different from total crimes? And I think. There are a couple easy reasons for it. Uh, one is, unlike in the past, in 2020, for example, about 97% of police departments reported their crime data to the FBI. Uh, by 2022, uh, less than half of police departments in the United States were reporting complete data. You had 32% that weren't reporting any crime data to the FBI. You had another 24% that were only partially reporting the data. And we can go and talk about that. But there's something else that I think is even more major, and that is uh, law enforcement in the United States has collapsed. Uh, if you take large cities, for example, over a million, in the five years before COVID, 44% of reported violent crimes resulted in arrest. It started falling in 2020, and by 2022, only 20% of reported violent crimes resulted in arrest. That's over a 50% drop that's occurred. But it's even worse than that when you look at arrests as a percentage of total violent crimes reported and unreported, because what's happened is 
as arrest rates have plummeted, and there's never been such a low re reported arrest rate in the past, not even close, uh, but as arrest rates have plummeted in the United States, a lot of the victims have kind of given up on reporting crime. Mm -hmm. So so the share of unreported crimes to the police has fallen. And in, in 2022, only 8% of total violent crimes result in arrest, and only 1% of total property crimes in those cities result in arrest. And just because somebody's arrested doesn't mean that they're charged with the crime, let alone prosecuted or convicted. And so, you know, if you tell me uh, well less than 8% of violent criminals uh, face any, uh, any, you know, retribution for committing the crime, and, only, and less than 1% of property cr criminals uh, face any punishment, you know, it seems not too far off to say that uh, that violent that that policing has collapsed in the United States. Yeah, now interesting because my background is in statistics, so there's lots and lots of really interesting questions in what you've just said there. I guess my first question is. You said that 97% of police forces used to report crime um, before, I think, um, I think you said before 2020, but now it's less than 50% um, reporting. Is is there any reasons reporting given by police data. forces? Sorry? Yeah, well, the, during the Biden administration, yeah, well, right. During the first year of the Biden administration, they changed uh, the reporting system uh, for, for crime. And part of what happened um, is it just requires more effort on the part of them. They yeah. want to report the crime uh, quarterly. Um, and and some police departments are saying that's too burdensome for us to do. Uh, but I think a number of police departments record the data anyway. So, for example, New York City and Los Angeles, um, you can go to their websites and you can see on a weekly basis uh, the data that they put out, uh, but yet they've stopped reporting the crime. Uh, and so I think for a lot of large cities in particular, uh, which should have no problem because the stuff on their website anyway, I think it's just been a political decision whether or not they're going to report mm. the crime data to the FBI. And what, what kind of crimes are we seeing increase? Um, we've only got about a minute left, um, sadly, John, so we'll have to cover this quickly. But obviously we hear stories about the fact that uh, petty theft has been basically decriminalised, hasn't it, under a certain amount. Is is that responsible for any, any of this increase? Oh, it's responsible for the property crime. I mean, look, you can go to a CVS or a Walgreens, these are drugstores, pharmacies in the United States, and you'll see they have rows and rows of their products behind glass. You have to go and call a sales yeah. clerk out to be able to go and open it up and stand next to you while you read it. People know that that wasn't true a few years ago. Uh, yeah, John, John, I'm very, very you know, sorry. Um, I'm going to have to cut. John, I'm sorry, we're going to have to cut you off because we're at the end of the show. But listen, obviously, we we, we tried to get you on video, um, but for technical reasons, we couldn't. So please, please, please do come back on because it's a really interesting conversation that I'd like to um, continue. Um, Dr. John Lotz, president of the U.S. Crime Prevention Center. Thank you so much for joining me on the Freeman Report. That's it from me today. Stay tuned with us right here on TNT.